What's going on YouTube? I'm Chiggs and today I bring you a brand new Android TV box by Entertainment Box. So this is the eBox Q Max. Under the hood, we have the S905X2 quad-core CPU with four gigs of DDR4 RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage. You also have dual-band Wi-Fi AC, a gigabit LAN, Bluetooth version 4, Android version 8.1 Oreo, supports 4K HDR at 60 frames per second, supports HDR10 HLG, and you have HDMI version 2.0, along with 5.1 surround sound. Now the box has a unique design with the edges slightly curving in in all four corners. You've got a matte finish on top with the eBox QMAX logo. Now on the front we have an LED display, nothing on this side. And on the back we have a power socket, optical out, HDMI out, a gigabit LAN, AV port, a separate infrared port. And if we keep going we've got a USB 3, USB 2 and a micro SD card slot. So that brings us back to the front. And this is what the bottom of the unit looks like. Now this is fairly a compact TV box, but to give you an idea of the size, I will bring in the Xiaomi box. So this is the Xiaomi box S. This is how they fare side by side. So the Xiaomi box is slightly smaller going all the way around and in thickness, the e-box is slightly thicker. Now inside the box, you will find a user manual, a UK power adapter and the voltage is 5 volts 2000 MA. You're also getting a 3.5 millimeter infrared cable. This is an optional cable and you don't actually have to use it because the box already has infrared built in. And the only reason they include this is you have a bracket, a mount. So you'll be able to mount this with this sticky tape on the back of your television using this bracket. And in that scenario, you would need to use the extended infrared cable in order to use the remote control. But if you have this on your desk normal, then you do not need to use that infrared cable. Now you're also getting an HDMI cable and a remote control. So this remote control will also allow you to control your television and you have a number of functions, but this is a standard RF remote control. It's not a Bluetooth remote and there is no voice search function or air mouse included, but you do have the standard button mouse. So you press the mouse and you'll be able to move the cursor with the manual navigation keys. So now I'm gonna get this box hooked up to my TV and capture card, and we are gonna find out how good it really is. I'll be right back. So first of all, I ran a boot up speed test, and this TV box took only 21 seconds to fully load the home screen from a cold start. Now here is the home screen for this box. It looks similar to Android TV OS, but this is definitely not the official Android TV OS. It's just a skin designed to look similar. So in the top left corner, you have your search icon and the local time is displayed on the right, along with your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity status. The first row can be customized with your favorite apps by hitting the plus sign and selecting your favorite apps. The next two rows of icons are your system apps. And right at the bottom, we have our settings, Wi-Fi info, app drawer, and droid settings. So first of all, let's have a look at the main settings and check out the system storage info. So we have 64 gigs of internal storage from which there are 55 gigs free to use. And if we have a quick look in about, you will see that this is running Android version 8.1.0 Oreo. So you can see the Wi-Fi status is now changed and we are now connected. Now let me give you a quick look at the Droid settings before we go into the app drawer. Now from this section, you will see a number of advanced options such as resolution, HDMI CEC, playback settings, audio output, and this does support Dolby DTS and 5.1 surround sound. Now you also have power key definition and a few more options and tweaks to play around with. Now let's move on to the default system apps. Here are all the apps available on this box as standard. I have not installed anything yet and you get quite a few to get you started such as Google Chrome, Netflix, YouTube, Mobdro, and the full version of the Google Play Store. Now this box comes pre-installed with AirScreen. AirScreen allows you to screen mirror with both iOS and Android devices. However, since Android Oreo, you are no longer able to mirror cast with this app, but AirPlay with iOS devices still works fine. So I did go ahead and test out AirPlay with my iPhone 7 and it was very quick and easy to connect. I was able to mirror my screen with no lag whatsoever. It was quite a smooth experience. 
So now I'm going to play some 4K video samples from a USB drive and I'm going to do this with the included KD Media Player. Now this is more or less the same as Kodi Media Player but you can uninstall this version and install the latest official version should you wish to do so. So that was 4K videos from the USB drive. Let's move on now to the YouTube test and you can stream a maximum of 4K on YouTube. There's nothing you can do. I'm sorry. But this is my home. New York is my home. It's America. She's marrying Zaman tomorrow. You have another one? You have two? Money, Karnika. Who would do this? Moving on now to the gaming test. Now for you advanced users, DRM shows Google Widevine level 3. And here is CPU Z, you can check out the clock speeds and you will also notice that the GPU is the Mali G31. And the box does come rooted as standard. And in the Wi-Fi speed test we got download speeds of 47 megabits per second and upload speeds of 9 megabits per second. And I then ran an Ethernet speed test where we got 48 megabits per second download and 9 megabits per second upload. And our current top speed is between 47 to 50 megabits per second. So that brings us to our benchmarks beginning with a Geekbench multi-score of 1584 and in the Antutu test we got 56k. So there you have it guys, that was the new E-Box Q-Max. So here are my thoughts on this TV box. Now the first thing i like to mention is this TV box has the S905X2, which is in my opinion currently the best CPU we have seen in these full Android TV boxes. It offers a great overall performance including streaming, gaming and multitasking. The best CPU I have seen so far, apart from the Nvidia Shield TV, is the S905X2. So when I review a box with this CPU, I'm always excited to see what a company can do to take advantage of this powerful chipset. Now this box does perform well and is as expected fast and smooth in operation. 
4K 60 frames plays nice and smooth from a USB drive and you can stream YouTube 4K. Now Netflix and Prime are working absolutely fine but limited to 480p but as mentioned before as long as they work it's going to be a pro as some other boxes have trouble playing Netflix or even getting licensing to make it work. So that brings us to the top TV box chart of 2019 allowing you to compare the specs and prices of all the latest TV boxes. So the eBox QMAX has ranked position 7 on this chart with a rating of 8.6 out of 10. And in the top benchmark chart, this box would achieve position 8. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. Bottom line, another great Android TV box sporting the S905X2. However, this box, whilst ticking more or less all the boxes, it is slightly let down by the price. When nearly all the other S905X2 boxes are priced, around 60 or under this box will cost you around $120 however on the positive side of the price this company entertainment box are quite established and advanced in the tv box world and are always dropping lots of updates and support is also very good and with that being said i will leave the links in the description so you guys can check this product out meanwhile thank you so much for watching and i hope you all have a brilliant day see you in the next one guys